find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh, check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at sliceonbroadway.com and tell them this show sent you. Hey guys, it is the awesome cast on Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter where we get geeky talk tech from a Pittsburgh state of mind. And uh, it is the holidays. We had our holiday end of year prediction and everything episode. This year I want to do something a little extra. Uh, this is going to be the first of two special episodes. Uh, we actually have a, a one in the can talk with Buzzy from over at Epicast. And we really take a deep dive of conversation about podcasting, state of podcasting, what you should consider with podcasting. You're going to be checking that out uh, the week of New Year's, actually. It'll be the last one of the holiday. And uh, and, 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 and also, the, we're also, as our gift to our Patreon uh, uh, people out there, we're not charging for these. They're not the regular episodes. It's bonus content as far as we're concerned. Uh, so you guys don't have to worry about that for the next uh, couple of weeks here. Uh, but thank you so much to our Patreon subscribers. You can support the show, too, if you're digging this stuff at patreon.com slash awesomecast. Check out awesomecast.net to subscribe to this and other shows in our great awesome chat and uh, awesome cast on the Twitters and the Facebooks as well. John Chichilla, my regular co-host, is with me. He is the man. His house is is... <laughs> Is like tech central. Uh, I'm all, I haven't been over for a while to see what other doodads, but even like your apartment beforehand, like there's the light switch that does this, this, and this, and this is the command center and everything. And now that you have a house that you can actually do things to, I I can't even imagine. I'm pretty sure the toaster like like talks to me at this point, right? <laughs> I'm I'm, I'm I pretty actually, sure. Oh, go ahead. Oh no, no, go ahead. I, I've actually um, taken in anywhere where you have to name your house, it's actually listed as Stark Tower pretty much so uh, a, a nod to to the avengers and tony stark so yeah like on the nest and on on some different stuff that i have around the house it's actually labeled as stark tower so awesome. I, I try i try to try to bring it in as much as possible that's great uh so 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 i figured it'd be good to just at least i take a super deep dive into home automation with you you're the expert i know you're sharing kind of things as they go new things you're experimenting with uh, like a week to week and, and it's kind of hard i know i've had trouble kind of piecing all this stuff together and see how it applies in the grand scheme of things. And I know it's kind of, you know, you talk about wellness is like kind of a whole body approach, like a wholeness approach. I feel like, I feel like the house needs to be something of the same thing, right? Cause you need a commonality. Mm -hmm. You need stuff that's going to talk to each other. You can't have a light switch here that does this, but this one's on a whole other system over here that does this with your doorbell. Um, like necessarily, uh, uh first, I know you kind of have a path for today, but help me understand Chilla, <laughs> all this technology. <laughs> Oh, and, and it, it's interesting, and I think you bring up a very valid point to, to anyone listening or, or thinking about doing this. It is important to sit down and figure out everything that you want to sooner or later be able to control or automate, um, and then kind of go through some of the stuff of what we're going to talk about today and figure out, okay, I'm, I'm an Android user or I'm an iOS user, so I can use either one of these or I can use both of them. Um, but if I'm going to use this one, maybe I don't want to use this other one and I need to stay kind of, I don't want to say with, with a single brand, but I think what you'll find over time is you're going to start to pick up things and you're going to say, okay, I'll buy from brands A, B, and C, and I'm going to skip D and maybe in a far, far off future state. When I get really advanced, I'll go with, with brand E, F, and G, but it is important to start, A, thinking about what you want to do and then even think, okay, right now maybe I'm going to do just these three plugs in these three different rooms, but next year I'm going to do the thermostat and I'm going to do the basement lights and I'm going to do whatever. So, and, and, and to kind of even go deeper on that is, are you going to be taking the light switches off the wall or are you just going to be kind of putting something in between the lamp and the light socket um, or the, the power outlet and, and it's kind of like a small device um, that you kind of put in between that lets you control and turn on and off. Um, so so you, you bring up an extremely valid point of, of think about what you want to do now but then think about um, what you want to do in the future. 
and even a couple shows ago, I think it was two shows back, um, we talked about the the iHome had a, a a small plug like what I'm talking about. Um, it's the they call it the ISP five, um, and what it is is it's a it's a smart plug, and I actually have the box right here. Um, so it looks like this, and Sorg, I think I put a link to the Amazon mm-hmm. page yep, I got it up. in the in the notes there. But um, is it reversed to you too, or is it just no, me? no, no? That, that's Google Hangout. You're good. Okay, cool. Um, so so th- it's just a little plug that goes in between um, whatever you want to plug into it. This doesn't have anything magical about it. It, it. it can't dim a light. You'll see some that are dimmable. Um, but this is meant for appliance, and, and that's what they'll actually call them. There'll be a lamp module or an appliance module. Um, so if you're gonna, if you're, you can use the appliance module on a lamp, but you can't dim it. Most lamp modules will let you dim the the lamp itself. Um, one thing to pay attention to when you're when you're working with lamps is depending on what kind of light bulbs you're using. If if you use the the ones that have the little spiral in them or the, they're a spiral themselves and they're that CFL bulb, um, you actually have to be really careful with those because there is sometimes a little bit of electricity because the device has to be powered that bleeds through. Um, and the CFL bulbs will actually tend to flicker even when they're technically turned off. Mm. Um, so just, just kind of a helpful hint there. So, so what I actually started with around our house, and I've actually kind of reset what I was doing because I went with a, with an early on company called X10, but I've started to use these these types of things around the house. Um, the nice thing about these are they're they're um, they can be used with iOS or Android, um, and I'm guessing they'll have probably a Windows. Um, app out soon, which goes all the way back to Android Jelly Bean 4.2 oh, wow. and I think iOS 6 or earlier. And I actually have this controlling the lights in the podcast room or the, for that I'm using right now. And then I actually have them, I have one plugged into the Christmas tree right now. So I can actually set those. I can I can say, hey, turn them on I, to, to Siri. Um, I can say, hey, turn them off. You can actually also set what they call scenes. So you can kind of make it movie time or, Hey, I'm home. Hey, I'm going to sleep. Hey, good night. Um, and those are all different kind of scenes that you can set, um, which works out extremely well. And like I said, th- th- to me, this is like the dip your toe in the water of turning things on and off. You can do it, whether you're in the house, whether you're outside the house. Um, and they, they, they they're relatively inexpensive, um, I think that Amazon has them at about 35, 36 bucks right now. And I've seen them as low as twenty nine ninety nine at Home Depot. But I, I don't know, Sorg, what do you, what could you envision yourself from this perspective? Kind of controlling around your house. Do you think you'd set up lights to it or? Uh, yeah, I, I, I think the first easy thing is going to be lights. Uh, it, it, this is, you know, it's kind of funny because you're talking about the the plugins, and I, I should grab them. They're somewhere around here because you know I keep like everything. Uh, like my my first autom- home automation experimentation, we bought an IBM Aptiva, uh, one sixty six Pentium from Radio Shack, and there was something going on where they had some kind of deal, and we got with it a home automation pack. Okay, mm-hmm. that included these kind of uh, work through plugs, right? And, and I was mm-hmm. able to set things up and it would, but, but it, they were odd because I don't think they had have been using some sort of not Wi-Fi or something because we didn't have Wi-Fi back then. It was 1996 or seven, right? Um, and they talked to each other and you had to plug in the units and then you have a unit that I think plugged into the computer itself. Or, or it went over the, 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 the electrical line, maybe it signaled as well. And that's that's what the, my old set, I, I had that, and it, it went over the electrical, so it sent us a, a minor pulse to tell it to turn on or off. Right, right. And, 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 and that was, and, and, you know, we had to have the computer on all the time. It's before you really wanted your computer on all the time or anything like that. 
Uh, and it was really goofy, and that was always that kind of shaped kind of the oh, it's there, or it doesn't really work, you know, kind of thing, <laughs> uh, you know, and 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 that kind of halted my my kind of experimentation as we've moved into apartments and houses and things like that. And and for me, for for me, my house is like, well, man, I I have a lot of work I need to do with this house before I think about upgrading to the the future. <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, and also wiring, wiring is a huge issue. There was a there's an outlet we wanted to upgrade to three prong, and we couldn't do it. Like usually, it's a pretty simple thing, right? You know, you you've been doing mm-hmm. this for these things, but um, even even like my father in law looked at him, was like, no, that's not the way that they usually are. You know, it was so just the stuff in this house is so old and needs 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 updated before I think we even get to this point. Like we need to get a couple centuries ahead, or not centuries, get a couple decades ahead before we can get to this century. You know, and and I think you bring up a good point too, and and it's it's still around today. It sounds like with the Aptiva thing there was something that then plugged into the computer um, that kind of then spoke to all those little devices around, around the house. Right. Um, the, the nice thing about that. And the reason that I said, it's kind of a dip your toe in the water device that, that I home device is it doesn't require one of those, those devices to plug into the computer. Nowadays they're, they're not necessarily plugging into your computer. They're just plugging into your network. Um, a lot of them will connect over Wi-Fi or they can connect over Ethernet. Um, and a lot of people call them, or a lot of different companies call them different things. They can be called a bridge or they can be called a hub. Um, the same thing even that goes for like a Sonos wireless speaker type setup, right? Mm-hmm. Um, the, it, it, those devices, this the, the Amazon, or the, I'm sorry, the iHome device doesn't require a hub or a bridge. Um, when you get into some of the more advanced features, um, like Belkin has some nice setups with Wemo. Um, they have the Wemo, and they call it a link. It's a it's a small hub that you plug into your network, um, and then it can help speak to the light bulbs and the and the different things. Uh, the the one cool thing that I've seen a lot of companies come out with is the the flexible um, light light strip. Um, that you can kind of a lot of them are you can just actually cut them to to be what size you want, and they have small LED lights in them, and that they don't really plug in to anything for for a lot of them. Uh, they'll last up to twenty years I've seen, and they can set any red, green, blue, white value. Um, you can kind of turn on. It's good for um, lighting under the the kitchen cabinets, lighting under. Um, anything that kind of track lighting along the floor, um, anything like that. But I've, I've done some experimenting with the, the Belkin Wemo stuff. I would say it's kind of like the next step up. Mm-hmm. The nice thing of what Belkin's done is they've actually taken some additional devices. And instead of having to worry about kind of putting, putting that piece in between them, in between the light switch or the or in between the power outlet and the device you're trying to control, they actually built in the Wemo right to the device. So they have like a crock pot. They have a Mr. Coffee ten cup. I'm looking at these um, it's, smart it's, brewer it's humidifiers. They have, they have a humidifier. It's great. It's great. Um, they they have a cool thing that's an actually they call it the Insight switch. Mm-hmm. Um, it actually monitors the elect the electricity that's being used and consumed obviously different things that you plug in um, are going to use different amounts of electricity um, their insight switch not only can you remote turn it off remotely from the, from your phone or, or from whatever um, but you can turn it um, you can actually monitor the power that it's also using I actually got that this for my the, the insight switch because it doesn't require a hub um, last year because it actually has a power button right on it, which is a nice, nice thing for it. But um, it allows her, it, it, she constantly forgets to unplug her curling iron. Ooh. So if she's on her way to work and it's like, oh, did I turn it off? She can actually look on her phone. Oh, yep, it's off or, oh, nope, it's on. And then she can send the, the turn off signal. Oh, that's great. Um, that is amazing. That, that, I mean, that's, that's, I think when we talk about automation, we talk about our phones, it's, it's you know, tools that will help you um, 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 with your own failings, you know what I mean. Yeah. Uh, I never remember to go home and 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 oh, I got to change the laundry that I put in before I left, or something like that, right? Uh, oh, uh-huh. hey, remind me when I get home, right? Or or something like that. 
oh, I forgot that file at home. Wait, I can just log in and get it. You know, it, it, it extends that, you know, a, a, a kind of idea with it. So, uh, hey, by the way, I found a picture. I, I sent this to you on the Slack. I know you don't have the video feedback here today. But, yeah, it's the uh, IBM Home Director. Uh, oh, okay. And, uh, yeah, it was it, – th- that was it. Discover how your Aptiva – and it was I think it was only compatible with the IBM Aptiva. Because uh, <laughs> the, there was some extra stuff in there. Like, they did, like, really interesting – this is when I started hating proprietary stuff. Like, it was to the point where they had a modem and a sound card that was a combined thing. And I couldn't play Quake and pl- – I couldn't play Quake with the sound and online at the same time. That was a problem. <laughs> Uh, discover how your Aptiva can control lights and appliances in your home. Easy to set up, requires no special wiring, works anytime, powers on your Aptiva when needed, and works with other brands of controllers and modules. Look, cross compatibility way back in like 1996. What's our problem these days? You know? <laughs> but but well, I wonder, do you, do you remember how it plugged into the computer? Was it like USB or serial port? I'm pretty sure it's a serial port. And I'm pretty sure, I think I can see it there in that shot. I'm not, I think that's a serial port. There's no, it's definitely a serial port. Like, I think we plugged it into the wall and it went into the serial port. And it was like, but it was like, it, it might have been like its own serial port too. This computer has since mm-hmm. been destroyed, uh, I think, in a fire. Like, literally, I think we threw it in a fire. Uh, don't do that. That power supply explodes, by the way. Uh, red, rednecks. Um, but anyways, um, but no, yeah, that was that, that the earliest uh, experience I had with it. So it was good. And if you still have one of those computers, you can pick it up for e- on eBay. I see you have for, here for seventeen ninety nine. There you go. There you go. <laughs> Oh, good stuff. Good stuff. Anyways, I'm sorry. We were talking oh, about Oh, no, no, Vito. no. That's okay. <laughs> the, the, I mean, some of the old stuff's really cool to look at to see how far they've come in, in what I consider kind of a short period of time. Oh, certainly. Um, that's that's 20 the, years ago. Go ahead. That's 20 years ago. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. I feel like it was just yesterday. Mm-hmm. The, the one thing that I will say for the, for the Belkin and Wemo devices is – while they do support both iOS and Android, they do not support HomeKit. So Siri can't talk to them. They do have a publicly facing um, API, though, where you can actually get a token from the from Wemo for if this, then that. So I know you've, you've talked about if this, then that on the show a while back. Um, you can actually set, it, set up your Wemo equipment to work with that. You can send an email. Um, to turn stuff on, you can you can do a lot of kind of workarounds. Um, the other company that I've heard or seen all doing a lot is Amazon with Wemo. So the Alexis, the their like in-house microphone slash speaker, um, that actually will integrate with Wemo rather well. So you can tell, say Alexis, turn on the kitchen lights, or Alexis. Um, turn off my curling iron mm-hmm. um, or, or, or do whatever. The other thing I've seen Wemo start to do is they actually sell a maker device, which allows you to kind of program a, a, a device and really kind of get into the guts of, of what you want to do with their devices. Oh, cool. um, the one thing that, and they're, they're claiming that they're actually going to come out with a software update that makes them home kit compatible. Um, the thing that makes me a little bit nervous and just, to, to be completely transparent, um, I hear one of the things that you have to do to be HomeKit compliant, which a lot of companies are having problems with, is you have to have end-to-end con- encryption from the device to the service, from your, from your mobile device to the service provider, and then down to the actual the device that's controlling things in your house. It has to be end-to-end encryption, um, which makes me kind of nervous. Is what is is Wemo not doing full end-to-end encryption? And could someone be reading things like username, password out of that connectivity? Um, and I know Philips had such a they didn't even put some of the encryption pieces that were required in their bridges. And they just actually had to release a, a new bridge um, to be HomeKit compliant. So that is something I'm, I'm not saying or I'm not trying to say you have to be Apple to use these devices. But I would say if you want to look for the safest devices, look for the ones that work on both and are HomeKit compatible. Because then, you know, even on the Android side, 
they, they should be using some stronger encryption there, which I think is something important when you think about, okay, I'm putting up cameras or I'm, I'm putting something that can control my heat or my uh, security or my lights. Um, I, I don't think you want people willy nilly <laughs> powering up and powering down your entire house. <laughs> Right, exactly. I mean, that could be a problem. Like, like somebody, you know, I, I can remotely turn on your 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 heater and just mm-hmm. bake the place while you're gone, and 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 not to mention what's going to do to your gas or electric bill. You know, I mean, like I'm going to, I'm going to take your thermostat and just turn everything down, and your frights, your 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 pipes freeze. You know, that's a, I mean, exactly. That's, that's I mean, yeah, you can do a lot of sabotage if you got in there. A lot of sabotage. Wow. Or and especially because some of the ones and I, I didn't put it in the in the in the list of links here, but there's there's some of them now that are actually locks to your door. So Kivo, um, there's the, the Kivo device that's actually a, a Bluetooth deadbolt. Um, there is there's the August lock, which is a deadbolt. Um, so they're actually getting to the point now too, where you can walk up onto your porch and your your deadbolt's going to unlock. Um, or the interesting thing too, that if the deadbolt doesn't see you in the vicinity for a prolonged period of time, it'll auto lock, which I've actually heard if you don't turn that off and you live in kind of like a condo complex, you leave your, your, you leave your phone somewhere in the house that it's not near the lock, but then you go visit a neighbor right next door and then you go to get back in your house and, oh, you're locked out because the, the house thought you were away and it thought, hmm, I need to secure the place, so I'm going to lock. I'm, I'm going to lock up. Wow! And, and unfortunately, the keys are in the house. <laughs> <laughs> I've I've seen ones of those too that kind of have have a handful of fallbacks. Right? They have kind of a key fob where you it's like a remote control. I've seen ones, and and to me, the, this is kind of like the last step after you get everything, and you're used to things being automated. I think that's when I, I think it's time for the locks. I think the lo- locks aren't aren't kind of a step one some of the locks too have a have a keypad on them mm-hmm. where you can it has a backup combination pad the other thing to keep in mind too is most people don't have electric running into their door so a lot of those two are, <laughs> are powered by either nine volt or four double a's so you kind of have to have some kind of backup um, obviously all of them have a key a physical key if you want to use that um but kind of running on the ends or right up against the, the Wemo offering, I would say Belkin and Philips, the Philips Hue lights were kind of the first ones to the market. So they've been around for, from, for me, for the, from my point of view, for the more modern, like obviously we talked about the IBM home director, there's the X10, which has been around, I think since the sixties or seventies. Um, but, but Philips arrived on the scene and they, they were actually, the first ones to include it directly in the light bulb. Um, since then, they've kind of broken out, but they they have control right at the light bulb level, so it's not at the switch or, or the outlet level. Um, the thing that's tough about these are that, think about it, then you have to leave whatever you're controlling on, um, which I think can sometimes be confusing. So imagine never using your light switches in your house again, but the moment that someone actually flips the switch off, you can never, you can't turn your lights back on again, I think, which can be kind of tough from the Philips point of view. Their, their kind of entry is in the $200 price range, obviously well above the, the single Wemo device or the, the, the $30 to $40 iHome device. Mm-hmm. Um, and that starter kit gets you their bridge and three light bulbs. Um, they do light strips. They do. They've actually get, been getting into some external lighting, so they have some some lights that you can actually put outside their indoor indoor outdoor lighting. The interesting thing that I like the most about their devices, though, is they actually started selling physical remotes um, that you can place different areas around your house, and you can actually program the remote to be what you want it to be so like one of their remotes they call it the few the phillips hue tap switch it just has three buttons and one two it has like one dash two two lines and three lines um and you set those to be what you want so maybe you want it to the first button is a certain light turning on or toggling on and off the second one turns 
the entire kitchen and living room on and off. And then the, the third one could be whatever else you want it to be. The thing that the thing that I like about Philips coming out with kind of a remote control, I think it bridges the gap for a people that are staying at your house. Typically, you're probably not going to leave a tablet laying around or an extra cell phone laying around for them <laughs> to control things in your house. And that's the one thing that we run into the most is think about your visitors, um, especially anyone that's going to stay for more than a few hours. Um if they can't turn on the lights to the bathroom and it's dark, you're probably going to have a mess on your hands. <laughs> um, and so, so, so Phillips kind of was the, the first, one of the first ones on the scene that I saw that had kind of a, a complementary device that let you control it from a remote within the house. Um, it also can get your guests into in getting used to, and family members getting used to not using light switches anymore. Um, like, like I was saying, because when you start to use the light switch, then it kind of starts to to break down some of the control and, and systems you might have in place. Um, they've actually started to come out with some some additional devices too. Like they actually have a physical lamp, um, and they have a dimmer switch that you can kind of paste up on the wall. Um, and then they have what's called the Bloom and the Iris, which are kind of almost like a floodlight, but you can actually put it like on a countertop or on an end table um, kind of just gives a definite neat look and feel to, to different areas of the room. Um, and it, the interesting thing is that the bloom and the iris are kind of almost like a slick lamps, um, but they don't require from, from my understanding is they don't require an actual um, power outlet. So it's kind of a LED lights, low power, and then it's I think it's powered by potentially powered by batteries. Right, right. And they're, they're kind of nice, stylish kind of things by themselves, um, and and yeah, they look kind of nice. The Bloom. And I've I've heard of people using the Bloom outside mm -hmm. and kind of putting it around their plants or lining their walkway, um, things things of that nature. So. The, the interesting things and we were or the interesting things about Philips if you were if you've been watching their products in the in the news this week um, they their bridge actually worked with a number of other manufacturers we remember we were talking about earlier you know make sure when you're buying a device you, you think about what you're going to be using and what you want to do in the future to make sure you don't end up six months from now you want to do something and realize oh I either have to replace everything I have or I have to install four different bridges to talk to four different brands of equipment. Philips was actually also one of the first ones on the market that said, we're going to let you control almost any device um, as long as it can talk to our hub and it's kind of a, used uses an open standard. Um, you can control those as well from our, from within our app and with, from within our, within our controllers. Um, they realized that obviously that's not an easy task to handle. And they were having some problems, I think with some GE light bulbs, I think it might've been. Um, and it was actually causing issues, not only with, with the app, but controlling devices and uh, potentially other devices turning on and off when, when they weren't supposed to be, obviously that puts Philips name at risk, even though it's due to another company's product. So they actually issued a firmware update that only allowed Philips equipment to control Philips devices. Well, now you have all these people that have built out an entire home network full of other people's stuff, and they can no longer control it because they didn't go out and buy additional hubs and stuff because they could use the Philips brand. Um, but good news for, for those people that were using that equipment, Philips quickly reversed their their decision. This almost yeah. reminds me of the Microsoft um, decision to, to get rid of unlimited OneDrive space. Um, Philips actually reversed their their decision and they they actually started pulling the reverting the firmware and then you can, can still control other people's devices. Because the one thing I think you'll see, there's always going to be that small product you're like oh but this brand has this so that's where i think that cross-platform cross capability is important 
and that's that's interesting because I mean, it, it feels like uh, how well we're all buying digital versions of everything today between our music and our movies and even software in a lot of cases and like well they could just kind of pull the license and not provide that anymore right and you just lost your mm-hmm. movie song whatever um with all this cross compatibility i think it's a perfect example of well we can just kind of turn your house off because we decided we don't want to support it anymore <laughs> which is kind of scary right i mean this is this is we we, we have to kind of think about I, I don't want to scare people away from home automation and i think this is kind of a out there thing that could happen but there was a sample like you just talked about right so, mm-hmm. I mean, I, I mean, I, I think, uh, you know, as we make things more automated, just like, hey, we can we're automating more things in our car, but then we can get in through the Bluetooth and your car can get shut down again. <laughs> extended example. It's not like it's going to be a common hack. You know what I mean? But still, it's, it, it is a it is a, a, a pause for concern, at least. And, and imagine a day when you buy a house, and there's no light switches mm-hmm. because you can control all the bulbs. And you can control all the the actual sockets without the need for a light switch. I think that's where it kind of gets interesting. And that's where Philips and, and one of the other companies that, that I'm actually looking at for an expansion to some of my stuff is the um, Cassetta. I think it's Cassetta um, Wireless. And it's from, from a company called Lutron. Um, Lutron's a major manufacturer of other um, high-end light switches and, and, and whatnot. But one of the things that I like about theirs is their the way they made their remote, um, their remote is actually meant to slip inside of a panel that you can actually has double-sided tape and you mount on the wall like a light switch. Mm-hmm. But that small, they call it a Pico remote that small Pico remote then slips in there and it actually looks then like a light switch to many, but then you can kind of pull it off the light switch and take it around the room with you. And it, it offers, um, the on off capability, um, that they offer the, they offer some light switches that that you actually replace your light switch with. Um, they also offer the piece that goes in between, um, the light switch, or I'm sorry, the wall socket and a lamp that you would be plugging in. And they, they kind of have a lot of mix or match. The one thing that, that I hope they start doing is I think they have the nicest look to their devices where they kind of lack is their smart bridge while it's home kit compatible. Um, they, it doesn't talk to other brands. So if, if you right. wanted to, I have to buy this, and then if I wanted to get into the Philips I type of devices, like, then I have to go buy the Philips bridge. I feel like I feel like uh, by the I've been showing some shots from the site while you've been talking here, and I feel like uh, mostly these guys are like, "Yeah, you got the money to do everything if you're, <laughs> if you're going this way." Like, like, like they're like, "You know, do I do my whole home? Do I?" Because I mean, you're doing it kind of piecemeal, right? As you're going, and I think most normal people will be doing that. I'm like, all right, let's do the thermostat. Let's do uh, let's let's do the light switches in here. Let's do the light switches in here. This is a. It's not going to matter because you just did everything in that room in that house, right? Um, and, and, but, I, and that's I, another way to go. But you got to have the scratch in order to do that in the first place. And, and it can get it, it can get extremely expensive, extremely mm-hmm. quick. Where where I would definitely warn people is don't go room by room. Um, go task by task because everything can kind of be piecemeal. So where I started was, okay, I want to try to reduce energy consumption. So I'm going to get the thermostat. So we started with a nest and I'm like, Oh, this is really cool. This is really good. And I'm saving money. Um, Now I want to go for when I arrive home and it's dark out. So, but kind of try to stay on that theory of um, reducing energy consumption. So we did the back porch and the front porch light switches. So I don't have to leave the lights on the entire time I'm gone. So I have lights on when I come home. Mm -hmm. I can hit the switch from my phone when I'm pulling in the driveway. Um, Same goes for if, and I can actually set timers on them and that kind of thing. So if we're, we're gone for a week on vacation, I can turn them on, turn them off remotely, or I can have them automatically 
a lot of them, the, the cool thing is, is you can say, come on at sunset, but come on at a random time. So you can oh. say that come come on within a half an hour of sunset. So maybe obviously sunset's different every night, but if it looks very random and how they're turning off, and then you can say randomize the time off at 1130 PM by 15 minutes. So it looks like it's not the same, same exact time every day and night, which I think is pretty cool. But, but that's where I actually started was I want to be able to see getting in the house. So, so I, I had, I did the porches and then I'm starting to do the lights, one light inside the house for when I get home. So the porch lights come on and then one how one lamp comes on. Um, and then in the, in, in the office is where I start testing products to make sure that they, <laughs> a, they work and it's, B, it's, they work consistently. It's the lab. <laughs> because, because there's nothing worse than, than, than a wife or loved one. Um, saying I can't turn on any of the lights in the house or I can't turn on the TV. <laughs> um, it causes mass amounts of frustration when yeah. things don't work. Yeah. Um, so that's why I, I'm, I, I'm kind of test a single one of them in the, in the lab um, and then migrate it out into the house. Um, the, the other thing that, so, so that's kind of like, so then I'm going to do a lamp inside the house and then I want to kind of automate my go to bed process. Um, <laughs> you're so gonna, you're trying to do the, like you're to, trying to do the reverse George Jetson, right? Yes. You know? <laughs> I want it to be, okay, it's time for bed, shut off that lamp, shut off the porches and then turn on a light in the bedroom because our bedroom's close enough to the ha- the light in the bedroom's close enough to the hallway that it would act as kind of a guide light to get upstairs. Oh, wow. Um, so, so kind of those you're, are my, you're analyzing like, your own internal traffic patterns at this point. Yes. <laughs> it's, it's a great, because, because to, to your exact point of it, it can get extremely expensive. Mm-hmm. If, if there's a, a, a power outlet, in the corner of the room that I never plug anything into, but it has a light switch on it and it has a, it has an outlet. I'm probably not going to buy anything for that because, mm-hmm. or, or I'm not going to buy anything till I start using that, especially in current, current homes. I think they're uh, one of the building newer building requirements is I think they want um, plugs every, every six to eight feet or something like oh, that. Wow. So, it get extremely expensive. That's amazing. That'd be, um, but it's amazing for like, like you don't understand like what little I have to work with, with all the stuff I have in this house. <laughs> well, I mean, this even is in some, this, of the, some of the rooms I have too. Uh, yeah. I would definitely agree. Like, um, like, like you, it's, I, it's, I don't know. You see how many plugs are in the basement here. It's, mm-hmm. I mean, we are not to code. <laughs> and this, this, this place was built in the thirties and they, they obviously updated the power down here, but that's probably about it. So, yeah. And that's kind of, that's kind of how our house is. They've, they've updated the power, but I don't always have as many plugs as I need. So no, I have no, no. Oh, one you know, plug and it's, there's two 12 port surge protectors. Plugged uh, into the it. scary part is where I first put my office in here, where I used to have all of this in there, not all of this. We didn't, we weren't doing the video and everything at that point, but it's where I did the podcast, where I did everything. There's, there's plugs in there and there were three port plugs, but we went in with a tester and none of the third prongs worked so that's another thing if you get a new house you need to double check that and make sure they actually wired it correctly not just put a third prong uh cover on you know what i mean Mm -hmm. like did they actually ground that and when you have so much going on now i know i feel pretty safe down here because i know these have like the trip button on them and everything uh Mm -hmm. and that works so so not not quite so worried about those uh but up in that office that was one of the reasons I kind of moved away from that office <laughs> into another one. Although now everything in there just kind of runs off of one outlet. So I don't know if that's much better, but yeah. But I mean, that's one of those things. I mean, that's one of those things that, that mm-hmm. I was talking about where it's like, you need to say, okay, what can I do in the context of this? What do I need to update in my house before I get to that? And as a homeowner, like that becomes a very interesting question. Yeah. It, even I would uh, urge people to, to, check because i know there's a lot of the a lot of things to still today i think some of like the cassetta and and some of the 
extremely expensive kits or setups, the reason they're more expensive is because they have built in fault tolerance Mm -hmm. or they they can trip. Um, One of the things that I still haven't found to date is I don't think I've found one that can control a single, single switch um, light and ceiling fan. Um, it's something with the voltage in the ceiling fan mm-hmm. and, and the load that that puts on the wire that the, the home automation type equipment doesn't always handle that well. Or it, I actually tried to put a higher end one on one of ours and it, it was rated for the voltage, but because it was bleeding, because it had had a, a slight power trickle in it, it would actually, you could hear the motor going, bop, 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 oh, no. bop, bop. So, so you, you'll get some, if you're not careful, you can get some, some weird stuff. So yeah, definitely be careful of electricity, what, what your house can handle. Yeah. Electricity gets, gets interesting, I guess you could say. So <laughs> the other thing that I highly recommend, um, is go look in the app stores on your device, whether it be Android or iOS, or I've even some, that, some are on the Amazon store, um, go look at their user interfaces and what else they'll interface with. Um, one of the things that I haven't been very impressed with on the Apple side is there's no single app that Apple provides. Um, it's kind of up to every third party to provide an app. That doesn't mean it can't, you can't tell Siri to do something for you. Right. Um, but typically the setup and everything has to come through the vendor or the, the company's application. Um, and I put a link to an iMore article about the Home app, which was the, the they're touting it as the program Apple should have shipped with HomeKit. Um, <laughs> someone took all pretty much every capability of the HomeKit API set and put it into menus and into an app. Um, the app does come in at the $14.99 level. If you're spending two hundred dollars on lights or switches, um, I think fifteen dollars is, is kind of expected from from an app perspective. Um, and the reason that I say this is because this developer has gone to the nth degree. Um, he put Apple Watch pieces in, so you, it ties the the app ties into the Apple Watch if you want to use your Apple Watch with it. He put notification center widgets um, Hmm. in there for your favorite devices. So you can just swipe down at any time from anywhere on your device to get to certain things within the, within your, within your home automation. Um, And then he broke it out into kind of the hierarchy of what Apple does of um, the house itself, the rooms within the house zones and scenes and triggers. Um, So, in there, you can kind of go in and say, this plug is in this room because that's something that's important, right? You don't just want to say, you don't want to say just this is the upstairs office light switch, right? Because you want to know, you want to be able to say, turn off all the lights in the office or turn on all the lights in the office. So if, if things aren't grouped and planned out like we were talking about appropriately, you can't do the cool stuff like that. Right. Um, you can't say, hey, I'm watching a movie and all the lights dim to down to 10 percent and and certain things turn off completely and the, the door locks and whatever. So um, this app kind of lets you do all of that um, to the point of you could actually tie it and they, it has what's called triggers. Um, so let's say you're in a house like mine, and this is actually something I'm interested in, in playing around with come summertime. Um, we don't have central air. Um, we have steam-based heat, and we have window air conditioners. I can actually put a plug in, the, in between the air conditioner and the outlet, and then I can say, obviously, my heat's not going to come on the nest, mm-hmm. but I can have the power outlet monitor the thermostat (laughs) and when it gets too hot i can have it turn on and off the air conditioner which typically you can't do 
with like we have which, some of the window air conditioning which is better than my old. method of holding out as long as possible before i start kicking on that ac mm-hmm. <laughs> wow so 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 the, the one thing i will say about this app is like, like i said the developer has pretty much given you the keys to the kingdom mm-hmm. um but the only the only caveat to that is, is your device does have to be it's ios only and it has to be home kit enabled so the thing that kind of bums me out right now is I can't until Wemo updates their some of their equipment. I can't use it with the Wemo equipment, but I can use it with pretty much everything else. Wow. Well, and I've seen some other devices too where that they can actually monitor. I think the Echo B can monitor how many people are in a room. Because <laughs> I, I think it was. I think it was. I, I was it on. It might have been on Mac Break Weekly. Someone was saying they they left. They went on vacation with with their spouse, and their teenager. They left their teenager at home for the week, and they got a notification alert on their phone that there was more than fifteen people in the living room. <laughs> <laughs> and they called home, and they said, "Well, what do you?" what are you doing? And the kid said, oh, I'm just sitting here playing video games. Well, they were actually throwing a party. Yeah. <laughs> so, so that's kind of a neat thing too. Cause you could think about maybe I should turn the heat down if I have certain amount of people in a specific room. Right. Um, things of that nature. So there, there are some devices out there that will that'll go to that extent as well. That's awesome. Oh, uh, well, Chilla, I, I don't even know. Oh, like we could probably go on for hours on this stuff. But uh, any any last last tips here for people starting? You obviously talked about you know kind of the plan, kind of the looking forward, the 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 the, the, the process versus room. Anything last, last minute uh, for anybody considering something like this? No, I, I think that I think that definitely definitely sums it up. I don't think you can plan enough, and and mm-hmm. when you're when you're done, I guess the only thing that I would tack onto that is when you're done with your plan look back at it and say, okay, what would I then want to do? Cause I mm-hmm. think you really need to think more than two steps ahead. You need, you kind of almost need to think wh- where's your finish line or, or what, when will you feel like it's complete well, and then try to take it one more step or else, or else um, like a lot of home improvement projects, it could be that project that never ends. Yes. So I this mean, is, this is definitely one. And, and maybe that's important too is don't try to bite off more than you can chew at one point in time. No. no. And, and it's okay to just do do one thing and have it kind of prove itself that it's valuable to you. Because I'd, I'd hate to see someone go spend five hundred, a thousand, two thousand dollars $2,000 on all this home automation stuff and then be like, well, yeah, that, that and then really I unplugged work. it all. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, that, that didn't work out so well, you know. Uh, it's amazing. And guys, if you have any questions about home automation, this is your go-to guy right here. He's experimenting with a lot of it. He's keeping an eye on all of it. At Chilla on the Twitters, joining us. Chilla, have a happy holiday. You have a happy holiday. I feel like this is like the end. This is the this is the after credits scenes. Like we, we're winding down the holiday. The credits have rolled. Well, we usually do then- that in the prediction <laughs> show, but we we kind of tack this on as well. But this is it's it's out of the box. It's something different. It's uh, it's uh, something. We'll see you in 2016, buddy. Uh, and then uh, we we have some very interesting stuff on the table. We might be doing with the awesome cast. I'm excited about that. Oh, chill. I don't think I ever told you about that. Stay on the line. Maybe I'll tell you afterwards some okay. of the some of the pr- <laughs> prospect prospectful plans for 2016 here that we've been talking about and uh so much more thank you everybody supporting us on patreon been a big year for uh, uh that and, and and seeing your support there and uh, again uh tune in next week uh depending on when you're listening to this uh we'll be talking with uh buzzy from the epicast network and find out how how both he and i were have been involved in the last couple months of podcasts involving the uh, mayor of pittsburgh uh and and and, and how that's come about and how that's been fun and important and, and podcasting yay i should just name that one podcasting yay uh when we release it so thank you so much uh you have been our awesome audience have an awesome week
This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.